All right, today I'm gonna to go over Fieldpiece's new digital manifold, the SMAN3, or as we like to call it, the SMAN3. Let's go ahead and turn it on, check out the features. The first thing you're gonna notice is how big the display is and how easily you're gonna be able to read those numbers even at a distance. And we have a nice bright blue backlight so you can see the display in hard to, hard, you know, bad lit areas. Now uh, on the display, the top line is always gonna be your pressures. The bottom line is always going to be the uh, temperature mode, and usually displaying the temperatures, but depending on what mode, it'll display a different type of temperature. Um, and the bottom line is always going to have your refrigerant in there, but depending on what mode you're in, you might have other things in the display as well. So let's go over the modes. First of all, how to get in and out of modes or cycle through modes is you just press this circle button. You'll see the modes listed around it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just press it once, and then that puts me into the T1, T2 direct mode. So right now you'll see the temperature is displaying in the middle of the display. Now all this is doing is taking the temperature right off the thermocouples I have plugged in. These are K-type thermocouples. And so the left side says T1 on the display. And it's labeling the temperature being taken from the T1 thermocouple, which is this pipe clamp right here. And then just same thing with the other side. Now with the pipe clamps, they have nice ears for storage. You can just clamp around and get the pipe clamps out of your way when you're not using them. So uh, this, the manifold also comes with wet and dry bulb thermocouples that you could plug into these ports and uh, use them for taking your wet and dry bulbs. All right, so the next mode is your vapor saturation temperature mode. If I hook this up to a bottle of refrigerant, I have a, a bottle of 134A right over here, so let's pan over here. And I'm just gonna hook it up, and I do have my refrigerant set for 134. How to change your refrigerant is just the big refrigerant bu button in the middle. I can cycle through my refrigerants. There's 39 different refrigerant charts built into the S-Man, and uh, they're listed in popularity, or more commonly, most commonly used. So you, all the ones that are uh, very common are kind of grouped together, and the other ones are just cycled through. That way you don't have to cycle through the whole list, like you're going from R22 to 410, or things like that. So, uh, and then I'm just going to open up the bottle. All right, and you'll see that I got a pressure display right on the top right here. Now the vapor saturation, what this is telling you is at 71.9 degrees, it boils at 70.2 degrees. So it's basically pretty close to its boiling point right now, um, right now. And then same thing with the liquid saturation temperature. Now what I can do is uh, this al also, I can calibrate the pressure to this known bottle of refrigerant with the T1, T2 direct mode. So I'm gonna go back to that mode. And how to calibrate it is the first thing you wanna do is zero it out, but it was zero when we started, so I didn't do that. But to calibrate it to a known bottle of refrigerant is first hook it up to the pressure and also take a thermocouple and hook it up to the bottle right here. You can see that I have a thermocouple taped with insulated tape right on the bottle right here so I can get the, um, you know, calibrate the pressure. And so now what I'm going to do is just press the calibration button. It says it's within range good. That means we're all good to go. So uh, now what I can do is I'm just going to take this out and put the pipe clamp back in. All right, so that's how to calibrate it. Now the next mode is the indoor is the su target superheat mode. So what it's, it has here is indoor wet bulb and outdoor dry bulb. That's the last test I took, and then it'll label your target superheat right here. If uh, what you can do is directly measure with the wet bulb thermocouple in the return plenum, your indoor wet bulb, and then take your, out, your uh, dry bulb thermocouple and measure your outdoor dry bulb, and it'll calculate your target superheat for fixed restrictor systems. Or if you don't want to drag this into, if the, if the evaporator's in the attic and it's kind of hard to get at, you can actually just take a reading and then manually enter it. So I'll do a, go, go through a manually entry for, to calculate target superheat. So first I'm gonna press enter. That's just gonna move me my cursor to the first digit on the indoor wet bulb. I can lower it, but let's move it to 
let's say it's 66.8 degrees indoor wet bulb. And then once I entered that one in, it's gonna move over to the outdoor dry bulb. And let's say it's 77. I can go up or down with the air, using the arrows. Let's say it's 77. And I'm going to enter that in. Just go through all the digits and press enter. Then it'll calculate my target superheat right here. So if I have these indoor wet bulb conditions and outdoor dry bulb conditions, my target superheat should be, my superheat should be 21.3 degrees. So then what you can do is go to the superheat and subcooling mode and directly measure your superheat and see if you're within range. And it's gonna label both your target superheat and your actual superheat. And that way you can dial in fixed restrictor systems. Now, if you're on uh, TXV systems or things like that, you just use your subcooling and not mess with the target superheat. All right, so uh, that's that part of it. Let's uh, close up the bottle and remove my hose. Okay. Now, the last the last thing I want to mention is this is a this has a built-in micron gauge. Now, since I'm not at a system in evacuating it, I can't really show you how that works, but it will automatically go into the vacuum mode when pulling a vacuum. But what I can show you is the, the vacuum alarm. This alarm button is just for the vacuum, so what you do is just hold it down to change it. Now what this does, I'm going to press it twice, and this is my low uh, vacuum alarm. What this does is as I start pulling a vacuum, I can set an alarm so that when it hits 50 microns, the alarm will go off. That way you don't have to babysit the system and you can you know, be in your truck or whatever and the loud alarm will go off. And as long as you're close enough to hear the alarm, you know, you'll know that your vacuum's done. Now the high alarm, so once, it's done, once it got down to that 50, and you can set it to whatever you want to, uh, but once it got, in this example, one, once it uh, got down to that 50 it, and you shut off the vacuum pump, it's going to start rising, and uh, so you can set a high alarm. So it'll go off when it hits, you know, let's say 300 or maybe 500, depending on what the system is calling for. Now it also has a timer in the display, so you can see how long it took to go, to rise from 50 to, in this case, 300 microns. And it might be, you know, as long as it's under five minutes, it might be okay. Whatever the manufacturer recommends, or whatever you feel comfortable with. The timer just gives you the ability to know. Now, the, uh, to calibrate the thermocouples, we have two calibration pots, one for each. What you want to want to do is just typically do it to ice water or to a known temperature that's it's already calibrated. But just twist the cal pots and that will adjust the temperature. And you should do that in T1, T2 direct mode. And that's how to calibrate it. Other alarms, I think we looked at the backlight, on and off, enter. Well, now what we're going to do is put it through a series of tests and show you guys how durable it is. That's the field piece, S-Man 3.